test runs to. One quick announcement, even though we don't have space in our service, but we would like to announce that um, our vote on Friday night for our whole church special conference was passed, that we will be receiving a full-time pastor coming up in July. So thank you, everybody. Just wanted to give that announcement.
Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations?
to dine at the house of Simon the leper. And I came in with my alabaster jar that was filled with expensive perfume made of pure nard. I broke the jar and I poured that perfume over Jesus' head. And the others that were there began to yell and to chastise me, telling me, don't I know how expensive that perfume is? That could have been sold and that money could have been given to the poor. But Jesus quickly told them to leave me alone. That what I had done was a good and wonderful thing. For you see, you will always have the poor and you will always be able to help them. But you will not always have me. What she has done is prepared my body for my burial. And when you tell my stories and you tell this story, you will tell her story also. And it will be in her memory that you tell this. I knew right then that there was just something about that name. chief priests in order to betray him to them.
It was just before the Passover feast when Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So, he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you'll understand. No, Peter said, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I washed you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus answered, A person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord and... Rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. It's been a while since I stepped out of that thing, friends. I love Peter. And I know it's something you probably hear often from people, but I love Peter and the ways that he interacts with Jesus. Do you ever ask the question, what was Peter thinking? Or or do you ever wonder what other questions Peter wanted to ask? Peter says, don't wash just my feet, wash my hands, wash my head, wash the whole of me. What is he thinking in this moment? What what is Peter getting at that all the other disciples, because Peter certainly wasn't the first one, but all the other disciples just had their feet washed and he had the audacity, or maybe the trust with Christ, to say, now hold on, I don't quite understand this. Not just my feet, but the whole of me. Why am I worthy for this? Why is this something that I get? And maybe it's not going to be enough because Jesus, I've been traveling with you for this whole time and you still haven't figured out that maybe this isn't for me. 
Or maybe I'm not good enough. Or, or maybe I don't understand well enough what's happening here. Jesus, why are you washing my feet? Why are you washing my feet at all? Christ teaches us something at this time in the story. Christ is trying to tell us what is important about being followers of His, about being children of God. Don't worry, we'll get to that meal bit in a moment. But I want to linger here. You know, I thought, as soon as I stepped out of the pulpit, would I ask them if I could take my shoes off? I'm getting a no. You can't smell it from here, Dave. It's fine. (laughs) Should I ask if I should take my shoes off? Because that's something preachers don't do, right? We don't take our shoes off. We don't jump up on the pews. And yet, what is it about feet? What is it about those parts of us that we're not quite comfortable with? I wonder what it would have been like Back in those days. Because I've been to foot washings before in churches. It's something that all the clergy, and we'll see if we get to do it this year, all the clergy do for ordination. The bishop kneels down and washes our feet. But I wonder what it would have been like wearing sandals all the time. Maybe you remember, if you've been on the beach for any amount of time, how dirty and sandy and gritty do your feet get? They're clean and pristine, aren't they? There's nothing wrong with them at all, right? It's just, what's that word? Exfoliation? Is that? No, they're, they're sandy and they're kind of gross. And as, as my wife calls them, your, your feet, you have feet fingers and she doesn't like them. You know, toes, I think some people call them. There's just something about them that makes us uncomfortable. Not everyone, though. But this is where the disciples are. They've been walking through the desert, through the sand, through the dirt, through the grime, through the muck. And here is Jesus, the one not only touching their feet, but cleaning them. I know it's starting to become a tired old trope, but remember when you changed your kids' diapers? It's kind of what cleaning feet is like, I would imagine. And it's crazy to think that Jesus was the one who was doing this. He didn't have to. He probably could have snapped his fingers and had someone else come. Someone else who could have washed their feet, did the dirty work, and he could have just relaxed and talked with his friends and his colleagues and his loved ones. But he decided to wash their feet. I've done a couple funerals over the last couple weeks. And I think it's been a year of change and loss and all that. And I'm not going to dwell on that. But I've wondered coming into Holy Week once again. It's been the longest Lent that I've ever been a part of. It started in, what was the date? March 17th, 2020. It's been the longest Lent I've been a part of. It's lasted a year. And yet here's a moment where I come into this thinking, if this is Jesus' last day on earth, his, his last night with his friends, This is what he does? This is how he spends his time with his most beloved people. He washes their feet. I'm thinking we should go to a concert and go out for dinner later. But there's something absolutely incredible and important about this moment because it shows us what was important to Christ. And what Christ is inviting us into and who Christ is encouraging us to become. 
What was that part in the Scriptures? A master's not greater than his servant. A messenger's not greater than the one who sent them. Friends, our Gospel reading today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 14, verses 25, 22 through 25. This is the Gospel according to Mark. While they were eating, Jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks and offered it to them and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many, he said to them. I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. probably been a while since some of us have picked up this book. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confess something. I use the screens anyway. At the beginning of it, though, there's a couple things. One of them is the ritual that we do for communion. We're not necessarily going to do it like it's written today. We're not necessarily going to do it like it's written today, but don't worry, we'll hit all the high points. See, the Monday, Thursday, the, the passages in Scripture that we were reading here, Monday, Thursday is the day where we get communion. It's the day where Jesus gives it to us and says, this is how I want you to do this. But he's really in good company because what he's done is he's taken a meal that he's used to, that, that his people, his brothers and sisters and mother and father, the, the things that have been passed down from generation to generation to generation uh, since the time Moses walked the earth. And that's not a joke, that's literal. He's taking a meal that his people had used to remember who they were. So, see, this meal was called Passover. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, friends, I don't know the intricacies of it. Part of my family is Jewish, and they celebrate this every year. And it's interesting to watch them do the meal, but it's kind of like walking into a church for the first time and, not, and coming into communion, not, not being quite sure what's going on. There's these words everyone knows. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. And, and then there's that thing, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And then there's some amens at certain points. And certain points we stand up and form a line and come down to the front. And I, You get the picture. It's a strange thing that we do, and yet it reminds us who we are. It reminds us of what's important to us as people of faith and not necessarily just the form and the steps but the reason that we do those things. See, there, there's five parts to it. This first one is praise. Have you ever praised God before? That's an underhand softball pitch. Please raise your hands. <laughs> you did it this morning, didn't you? You stood up and you sang and you lifted your voices praising God. And there's something important about that. 
apart from the fact that it is good to praise God. There's something that happens in our hearts when we do things like that. Have you ever given someone a compliment? What's it feel like? Depends if they take it, right? So if you give someone a compliment and they take it, what does it feel like to see the smile on their face? I've got friends who are Quakers. I can wait all day. (laughs) Go ahead and turn me down in the mics just a little bit. Thanks. Does it feel good? Does it feel crummy? Does it feel strange? Probably all, well, probably not crummy, but probably it feels good. See, this is in many ways what God is helping us do when we praise God. He's teaching us what it means to be good and kind, to love other people, to be okay saying, thank you, I'm grateful, I enjoy being in your presence. Friends, this meal, this Passover meal has different parts to it. We're not going to do a Passover meal. We're going to do the Lord's Supper today. But there's different parts to it. And for us, that first part is praising God. That, That was that line, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. I can't tell you how long it took me to memorize that. But I don't want to sing that one today. I I want to sing something else. Jeff, can we get that up on the screens? Maybe you've sung this song before. One body. Thank you. Friends, something happens when we stand and lift our voices up. Something full. Something beautiful. So I invite you to do that. I invite you to sing this song with one another as we bless God and bless each other. a little, take a seat, get comfy, and I am here in feedback back here for one reason or another, so I'm serious, get comfy, because the next part of communion is the part where we remember. That's better, thank you. The, The next part of communion is the part where we remember. How many of you have ever told a story in your life? That's another softball question. See, see, we as people, we tell stories. That's how we remember. That's how we teach. That's how we learn. That's how we connect. That's how we know that we are, well, I guess it's off, but one bread, one body. So do me a favor. This is not a rhetorical. Look at your neighbor. Look him in the eye. Friends, it's been a while. It has been a long while. I'm not asking you to get up, but what I'm asking you to do is wave at each other. Whether you've known him forever or you've just met him, tell him good morning, say hello. You can talk, it's okay, I know, this is the the sermon, right? Go ahead. Welcome everyone. Hello! 
What, what is this year been? I'm sure we all have stories from it. I'm sure we all have ways that we've tried to make sense and meaning from it. It's something that we do as people. And it's something that the church has done, at least in the Methodist church, once a month forever. We tell the story again. So in the beginning... There was static and fuzz and, and feedback was over the face of the waters. In the beginning, it was chaos. It was confusing. There was conflicting reports and not everyone knew what to do about whatever was happening in their lives. And it seemed like anything that was tried just fell flat. And God was hovering over that chaos, looked at it, spoke into it, and said, let there be light. And you generally know the rest of the story. God brought order to what was chaos. He brought structure to what was overwhelming. He said that no more are we going to live like this. We're going to create the whole of existence, and it'll be what? good and it'll be good no matter what it is it'll be good and then he made people and he called them good too right yes and we were good and in some strange way paradoxical way god we still bear the image of god but what happened what, what happened shortly after we were made and set in the Garden of Eden? Yeah. Sin entered. We got a little big for our britches. We, we thought that we could handle things on our own. And then what? We found all of a sudden that our relationship with God was a little bit in conflict. I know I don't have to ask the question, you ever been in conflict with people? I know you're going to nod your head yes. It's crummy, isn't it? It's not fun. It hurts your heart to know that there are people who maybe you had enjoyed their presence before in their company and their conversation, and all of a sudden, you can't. But what happened? See, God didn't just leave it there, even when he said, all right, here's your eviction notice, because there are lots of toys in here that you're going to get in trouble with and hurt yourself with. I'm not going to send you out empty-handed, and in fact, there will be a way. There will be a path. There will be some thing that we can do to come back together. And over and over and over again, God continually says, how about this? How about this? How about this? I got this guy named Moses. Maybe he'll help. Well, I've got these group of prophets. Maybe that'll work. Well, I've got this son named Jesus. And now we're in Holy Week, aren't we? Now we've just entered the moment where we remember the story of what God has done, of what Christ was willing to go through, of the grace and the suffering, of the love and the death, but eventually the resurrection. See, I know I'm cheating a little bit. I'm getting ahead of myself, aren't I? But this is part of sharing the meal together. We retell these stories to remember who we are and who we are as a people who are made in the image and bear the image of God, who sometimes get it wrong. And you know what? That's not the end of the world because Christ has redeemed us. We are a people who have been forgiven by Christ and empowered by Christ, who are guided by by Christ. Friends, may you remember that story throughout this week 
as you hear it told again and again in many different ways throughout this week, throughout your life, may you remember that you are a beloved child of God. And that there is no sin, there is no wrongdoing that can keep you from that love that God continually calls you back. Amen. Friends, the next bit, because, boy, we've done a lot of talking for a meal, haven't we? This is like when your Uncle Eddie stands up at the Thanksgiving dinner and wants to give a speech, and you can smell the deviled eggs and the turkey, and you just want to get to the food. No? You want to hear me keep talking? See, the the next part of our meal, the, the next part of what Christ did is in there. And it's a little different for us today. See, in our understanding, Christ is present. Christ is present in all things, but there are moments where we're more aware of that presence than others. And communion is a time where we are brought back to that reality and we remember that God is present in this moment with us. Jeff, can you bring the words up on the screen that are up next? Look at those fine men up there. Not those ones. Maybe we don't have them. The the call and response? Yep, thanks. So, So friends, there's this idea that we bless one another. That that this time is not just a meal, but that God is present in this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer up a blessing. That's part of being Methodist. This is what we do. But I want to invite you into this as well. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and start blessing the things that need blessed. But what I want you to do is I want you to join in with me. And at the end, I'll say, oh, Lord, bless this place. And I want you all to say, send your Holy Spirit. Can you say that with me? Send your Holy Spirit. Okay. Friends, can we pray? Almighty God, we thank you. We thank you that you are here with us. Lord, bless these people. Continue to strengthen their bonds of love and connection. Lord, give them grace. Give them peace. Lord, we thank you that we can gather in different ways that we have held on, that your people have been faithful, that they continue to be faithful. God, bless them. Bless all of us gathered here in the sanctuary, online. Bless your people. Oh Lord, bless this place. Send your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, we ask that you bless these simple things before us. Words, breath, the gift of bread, the gift of grape juice, the cup. Lord, we ask that you bless these things, that we might remember your presence, that you might be truly present. O Lord, bless this space. Send your Holy Spirit. And God, we ask that you bless the people once again, that they might be the body of Christ that they might be redeemed by His blood, that they might do the work that You've called them to do, that they may be at peace and not overwhelmed and not sent into the chaos to fail, but that they might be light, that they might be grace, that they, they might wash one another's feet, that they might be one bread and one body. Lord, bless this place. Send Your Holy Spirit. And all the people said, Amen. I know I'm starving. Friends, this is the body of Christ. Go ahead, take out your communion cups now. I think at this time, we'll go ahead and have a song after we share the meal together. But uh, if I need to run some up, I can. But friends, this is a meal. And we're going to do this a little bit differently. So during the song, 
you can relax and reflect. You can just listen to the music. This might be the only time you hear your preacher say this, but you could even talk to your neighbor if you want. But friends, the point of this is we are sharing a meal together, and so in those ways that meals bring us closer, that we share the love of one another, may we share this time with each other as well. So friends, take out your cups, open for the little, the little body. Friends, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Eat this as often as you can in remembrance of him. And friends, this is the blood of Christ, the blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink this in remembrance of him. So friends, we're going to end a little bit differently today. You all have some bags with you, I take it. Take those home. Look in them. I've been, I don't know if convicted is the right word or encouraged is probably a better word. I've been encouraged by God that it's been a long year and this Holy Week should be one of rest and in some ways one of joy. So may you go home. May this bag be a blessing. There's some things to active, activities. Can I use that word? Activities to do throughout the week. I encourage you to do them. Take some time out of your day, even if it's after dinner, after the kids are to bed, or in the quietness of the morning, if that's your time. But take some time and just be with God. And I hope these things are useful to you. But friends, the fifth thing about communion... It's a foretaste of the kingdom to come, which is a fancy way of saying it's a preview of the kingdom of God. So friends, in the way that that's a preview, I'm going to invite you to bless one another and to share the love of Christ with one another. And as we leave today, we'll um, be singing the Lord's Prayer I invite you to bless each other. Take as much time as you need. If you want to come up to the altar and the rail to kneel and pray, you're welcome to do that. But take some time to bless one another 
and to go out and reflect on the love and the grace of God, to know that we are one body, one church, that you are loved by God, that we are called to serve one another and to help one another and bear one another's burdens, that God loves you no matter what. So friends, I invite you to turn to your neighbor and say those words to each other. God loves you always. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.